the eighth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument the peers of the theasian state a council call to consolate ulysses with all means for home the council to a banquet come invited by the king which done assays for hurling of the stone the youths make with the stranger king demodocus at feast doth sing the adultery of the gods of arms with her that rules in amorous charms and after sings the intercourse of acts about the epian horse another argument theta the council's frame at fleet applied in strifes of game ulysses tried now when the rosy-fingered morn arose the sacred power alcinous did dispose did likewise rise and like him left his ease the city raiser laertiades the council at navy was designed to which alcinous with the sacred mind came first of all on polished stones they sate near to the navy to increase the state minerva took the herald's form on her and served alcinous studious to prefer ulysses suit for home about the town she made quick way and filled with the renown of that design the ears of every man proclaiming thus peers phiacensian and men of council all haste to the court to hear the stranger that made late resort to king alcinous long time lost at sea and is in person like a deity this all their powers set up and spirit instilled and straight the court and seats with men were filled the whole state wondered at laertes son when they beheld him pallas put him on a supernatural and heavenly dress enlarged him with a height and goodliness in breast and shoulders that he might appear gracious and grave and reverend and bear a perfect hand on his performance there in all the trials they resolved to impose all met and gathered in attention close alcinous thus bespake them dukes and lords hear me digest my hearty thoughts in words this stranger here whose travels found my court i know not nor can tell if his resort from east or west comes but his suit is this that to his country earth we would dismiss his hither forced person and doth bear the mind to pass it under every peer whom i prepare and stir up making known my free desire of his deduction nor shall there ever any other man that tries the goodness phiacensian in me and my court's entertainment stay mourning for passage under least delay come then a ship into the sacred seas new built now launch we and from out our priests choose two and fifty youths of all the best to use an oar all which see straight impressed and in their oar-bound seats let others hie home to our court commanding instantly the solemn preparation of a feast in which provision may for any guest be made at my charge charge of these low things i give our youth you sceptre-bearing kings consort me home and help with grace to use this guest of ours no man shall refuse some other of you haste and call to us the sacred singer grave demodocus to whom hath god given song that can excite the heart of whom he listeth with delight this said he led the sceptre-bearers lent their free attendance and with all speed went the herald for the sacred man in song youths two and fifty chosen from the throng went as was willed to the untamed sea's shore where come they launched the ship the mast it bore advanced sails hoised every seat his oar gave with a leather thong the deep moist then they further reached the dry streets flowed with men that trooped up to the king's capacious court whose porticoes were choked with the resort whose walls were hung with men young old thrust there in mighty concourse for whose promised cheer alcinous slew twelve sheep eight white-toothed swine two crooked haunched beeves which flayed and dressed divine the show was of so many a jocund guest all set together at so set a feast to whose accomplished state the herald then the lovely singer led who past all men the muse affected gave him good and ill his eyes put out but put in soul at will his place was given him in a chair all graced with silver studs and gainst a pillar placed 
where as the centre to the state he rests and round about the circle of the guests the herald on a pin above his head his soundful harp hung to whose height he led his hand for taking of it down at will a board set by with food and forth did fill a bowl of wine to drink at his desire the rest then fell to feast and when the fire of appetite was quenched the muse inflamed the sacred singer of men highliest famed he sung the glories and a poem penned that in applause did ample heaven ascend whose subject was the stern contention betwixt ulysses and great thetis's son as at a banquet sacred to the gods in dreadful language they expressed their odds when agamemnon sat rejoiced in soul to hear the greek peers jar in terms so foul for augur phoebus in presage had told the king of men desirous to unfold the war's perplexed end and being therefore gone in heavenly pythia to the porch of stone that then the end of all grief should begin twixt greece and troy when greece with strife to win that wished conclusion in her king should jar and plead if force or wit must end the war this brave contention did the poet sing expressing so the spleen of either king that his large purple weed ulysses held before his face and eyes since thence distilled tears uncontained which he obscured in fear to let the observing presence note a tear but when his sacred song the mere divine had given an end a goblet crowned with wine ulysses drying his wet eyes did seize and sacrifice to those gods that would please to inspire the poet with a song so fit to do him honour and renown his wit his tears then stayed but when again began by all the king's desires the moving man again ulysses could not choose but yield to that soft passion which again withheld he kept so cunningly from sight that none except alcinous himself alone discerned him move so much but he sat next and heard him deeply sigh which his pretext could not keep hid from him yet he concealed his utterance of it and would have it held from all the rest break off the song and this said to those o'er affecting peers of his princes and peers we now are satiate with sacred song that fits a feast of state with wine and food now then to field and try in all kinds our approved activity that this our guest may give his friends to know in his return that we as little owe to fights and wrestlings leaping speed of race as these are court rites and commend our grace in all to all superior forth he led the peers and people trooped up to their head nor must demodocus be left within whose harp the herald hung upon the pin his hand in his took and abroad he brought the heavenly poet out the same way wrought that did the princes and what they would see with admiration with his company they wished to honour to the place of game these thronged and after routs of other came of all sort infinite of youths that strove many and strong rose to their trials love up rose acronius and ochialus elatrius primnius and onchialus natrius erythmius thone proreus pontius and strong amphialus son to tectonides palinius up rose to these the great euryalus in action like the homicide of war nabolides that was for person far past all the rest but one he could not pass nor any thought improve laodamus up and abyssinius then arose and three sons of the sceptre state and those were halius the four praised laodamus and clitonius like a god in grace these first the foot game tried and from the list took start together up the dust in mist they hurled about as in their speed they flew but clitonius first of all the crew a stitch's length in any fallow field made good his pace when where the judges yield the prize and praise his glorious speed arrived next for the boisterous wrestling game they strived at which euryalus the rest outshone at leap amphialus at the hollow stone elatrius excelled at buffets last laodamus the king's fair son surpassed when all had strived in these essays their fill laodamus said come friends let's prove what skill this stranger hath attained to in our sport 
methinks he must be of an active sort his calves thighs hands and well-knit shoulders show that nature disposition did bestow to fit with fact their form nor once he prime but sour affliction made a mate with time makes time the more seen nor imagine i a worse thing to enforce debility than is the sea though nature ne'er so strong knits one together nor conceive you wrong replied euryalus but prove his blood with what you question in the midst then stood renowned laodamus and proved him thus come stranger father and assay with us your powers in these contentions if your show be answered with your worth tis fit that you should know these conflicts nor doth glory stand on any worth more in a man's command than to be strenuous both of foot and hand come then make proof with us discharge your mind of discontentments for not far behind comes your deduction ship is ready now and men and all things why said he dost thou mock me laodamus and these strifes bind my powers to answer i am more inclined to cares than conflict much sustained i have and still am suffering i come here to crave in your assemblies means to be dismissed and pray both kings and subjects to assist euryalus in open brawl began and said i take you sir for no such man as fits these honoured strifes a number more strange men there are that i would choose before to one that loves to lie a shipboard much or is the prince of sailors or to such as traffic far and near and nothing mind but freight and passage and a foreright wind or to a victualler of a ship or men that set up all their powers for rampant gain i can compare or hold you like to be but for a wrestler or of quality fit for contentions noble you abhor from worth of any such competitor ulysses frowning answered stranger far thy words are from the fashions regular of kind or honour thou art in thy guise like to a man that authors injuries i see the gods to all men give not all manly addiction wisdom words that fall like dice upon the square still some man takes ill form from parents but god often makes that fault of form up with observed repair of pleasing speech that makes him held for fair that makes him speak securely makes him shine in an assembly with a grace divine men take delight to see how evenly lie his words a steep in honey modesty another then hath fashion like a god but in his language he is foul and broad and such art thou a person fair is given but nothing else is in thee sent from heaven for in thee lurks a base and earthy soul and the hast compelled me with a speech most foul to be thus bitter i am not unseen in these fair strifes as thy words overween but in the first rank of the best i stand at least i did when youth and strength of hand made me thus confident but now am worn with woes and labours as a human born to bear all anguish suffered much i have the war of men and the inhuman wave have i driven through at all parts but with all my waste in sufferance what yet may fall in my performance at these strifes i'll try thy speech hath moved and made my wrath run high this said with robe and all he grasped a stone a little graver than was ever thrown by these phaeacians in their wrestling rout more firm more massy which turned round about he hurried from him with a hand so strong it sung and flew and over all the throng that at the other's mark stood quite it went yet down fell all beneath it fearing spent the force that drave it flying from his hand as it a dart were or a walking wand and far past all the marks of all the rest his wing stole away when pallas straight impressed a mark at fall of it resembling then one of the navy given phaeacian men and thus advanced ulysses one though blind o stranger groping may thy stones fall find for not admits the rout of all marks it fell but far before all of thy worth think well and stand in all strifes no phaeacian here this bound can either better or come near ulysses joyed to hear that one man yet used him benignly 
and would truth abet in those contentions and then thus smooth he took his speech down reach me that now youth you shall and straight i think have one such more and one beyond it too and now whose core stands sound and great within him since ye have thus put my spleen up come again and brave the guest ye tempted with such gross disgrace at wrestling buffets whirlbat speed or race at all or either i accept at none but urge the whole state of you only one i will not challenge in my forced boast and that's laodamus for he's mine host and who will fight or wrangle with his friend unwise he is and base and will contend with him that feeds him in a foreign place and takes all edge off from his own sought grace none else except i here nor none despise but wish to know and prove his faculties that dares appear now no strife ye can name am i unskilled in reckon any game of all that are as many as there are in use with men for archery i dare affirm myself not mean of all a troop i'll make the first foe with mine arrow stoop though with me ne'er so many fellows bend their bows at marked men and affect their end only was philoctetes with his bow still my superior when we greeks would show our archery against our foes of troy but all that now by bread frail life and joy i far hold my inferiors men of old none now alive shall witness me so bold to vaunt equality with such men as these echalian eurytus hercules who with their bows durst with the gods contend and therefore caught eurytus soon his end nor died at home in age a reverend man but by the great incensed delphian was shot to death for daring competence with him in all an archer's excellence a spear i'll hurl as far as any man shall shoot a shaft how at a race i can bestir my feet i only yield to fear and doubt to meet with my superior here so many seas so too much have misused my limbs for race and therefore have diffused a dissolution through my loved knees this said he stilled all talking properties alcinous only answered o my guest in good part take we what you have been pressed with speech to answer you would make appear your virtues therefore that will still shine where your only look is yet must this man give your worth ill language when he does not live in sort of mortals whensoe'er he springs that judgment hath to speak becoming things that will deprave your virtues note then now my speech and what my love presents to you that you may tell heroes when you come to banquet with your wife and birth at home mindful of our worth what deservings jove hath put on our parts likewise in remove from sire to son as an inherent grace kind and perpetual we must needs give place to other countrymen and freely yield we are not blameless in our fights of field buffets nor wrestlings but in speed of feet and all the equipage that fits a fleet we boast us best for tables ever spread with neighbour feasts for garments varied for poesy music dancing baths and beds and now phaeacians you that bear your heads and feet with best grace in an amoring dance and flame our guest here that he may advance our worth past all the worlds to his home friends as well for the unmatched grace that commends your skill in footing of a dance as theirs that fly a race best and so all affairs at which we boast us best he best may try as sea race land race dance and poesy some one with instant speed to court retire and fetch demodocus's soundful lyre this said the god-graced king and quick resort pontinus made for that fair harp to court nine of the lot choosed public rulers rose that all in those contentions did dispose commanding a most smooth ground and a wide and all the people in fair game aside then with the rich harp came pontinus and in the midst took place demodocus about him then stood forth the choice young men that on man's first youth made fresh entry then had art to make their natural motion sweet and shook a most divine dance from their feet that twinkled star-like moved as swift and fine and beat the air so thin they made it shine 
Ulysses wondered at it, but amazed he stood in mind to hear the dance so phrased. For, as they danced, Demodocus did sing the bright-crowned Venus's love with battle's king, as first they closely mixed in the house of fire. What worlds of gifts won her to his desire, who then the night and day-bed did defile of good King Vulcan? But in little while the sun their mixture saw, and came and told. The bitter news did by his ears take hold of Vulcan's heart. Then to his forge he went, and in his shrewd mind a deep stuff did invent. His mighty anvil in the stock he put, and forged a net that none could loose or cut that when it had them it might hold them fast which having finished he made utmost haste up to the dear room where his wife he wooed and madly wrath with mars he all bestowed the bed and bedposts all the beam above that crossed the chamber and a circle strove of his device to wrap in all the room and twas as pure as of a spider's loom the woof before tis woven no man nor god could set his eye on it a slight so odd his art showed in it all his craft bespent about the bed he feigned as if he went to well-built lemnos his most loved town of all the towns earthly nor left this unknown to golden bridled using mars who kept no blind watch over him but seeing stepped his rival so aside he hasted home with fair wreathed venus's love stung who was come new from the court of her most mighty sire mars entered wrung her hand and the retire her husband made to lemnos told and said now love is vulcan gone let us to bed he's for the barbarous Scythians. well appaid was venus with it and the fresh essayed their old encounter down they went and straight about them clinged the artificial slight of most wise vulcan and were so ensnared that neither they could stir their course prepared in any limb about them nor arise and then they knew they would no more disguise their close conveyance but lay forced stone still back rush the both foot cooked but straight in skill from his near scout hole turned nor ever went to any lemnos but the sure event left phoebus to discover who told all then home hopped vulcan full of grief and gall stood in the portal and cried out so high that all the gods heard father of the sky and every other deathless god said he come all and a ridiculous object see and yet not sufferable neither come and witness how when still i step from home lame that i am jove's daughter doth profess to do me all the shameful offices indignities despites that can be thought and loves this all things making come to naught since he is fair forsooth foot sound and i took in my brain a little leg awry and no fault mine but all my parents fault who should not get if mock me with my halt but see how fast they sleep while i in moan am only made an idle looker on one bed their turn serves and it must be mine i think yet i have made their self-love shine they shall no more wrong me and none perceive nor will they sleep together i believe with too hot haste again thus both shall lie in craft and force till the extremity of all the dower i gave her sire to gain a dogged set-faced girl that will not stain her face with blushing though she shame her head he pays me back she's fair but was no maid while this long speech was making all were come to vulcan's holy brazen founded home earth-shaking neptune useful mercury and far-shot phoebus no she-deity for shame would show there all the give good gods stood in the portal and past periods gave length to laughters all rejoiced to see that which they said that no impiety finds good success at the end and now said one the slow outgoes the swift lame vulcan known to be the slowest of the gods outgoes mars the most swift and this is that which grows to greatest justice that adultery sport obtained by craft by craft of other sort and lame craft too is plagued which grieves the more that sound limbs turning lame the lame restore this speech amongst themselves they entertained 
when phoebus thus asked hermes thus enchained wouldst thou be hermes to be thus disclosed though with thee golden venus were reposed he soon gave an answer oh said he thou king of archers would twere thus with me though thrice so much shame nay though infinite were poured about me that every light in great heaven shining witnessed all my harms so golden venus slumbered in mine arms the gods again laughed even the watery state wrung out a laughter but propitiate was still for mars and prayed the god of fire he would dissolve him offering the desire he made to jove to pay himself and said all due debts should be by the gods repaid pay me no words said he where deeds lend pain wretched the words are given for wretched men now shall i bind you in the immortal's sight if mars be once loosed nor will pay his right vulcan said he if mars should fly nor see thy right repaid it should be paid by me your word so given i must accept said he which said he loosed them mars then rushed from sky and stooped cold thrace the laughing deity for cyprus was and took her paphian state where she a grove ne'er cut had consecrate all with arabian odors fumed and hath an altar there at which the graces bathe and with immortal balms besmooth her skin fit for the bliss immortal solace in decked her in to be studied attire and apt to set beholders hearts on fire this sung the sacred muse whose notes and words the dancer's feet kept as his hands his cords ulysses much was pleased and all the crew this would the king have varied with a new and pleasing measure and performed by two with whom none would strive in dancery and those his sons were that must therefore dance alone and only to the harp advance without the words and this sweet couple was young hallius and divine laodamus who danced a ball dance then the rich wrought ball that polybus had made of purple all they took to hand one threw it to the sky and then danced back the other capering high would surely catch it ere his foot touched ground and up again advanced it and so found the other cause of dance and then did he dance lofty tricks till next it came to be his turn to catch and serve the other still when they had kept it up to either's will they then danced ground tricks oft mixed hand in hand and did so gracefully their change command that all the other youths that stood at pause with deafening shouts gave them the great applause then said ulysses o oh, past all men here clear not in power but in desert as clear you said your dancers did the world surpass and they perform it clear and to amaze this won alcinous's heart an equal prize he gave ulysses saying matchless wise princes and rulers i perceive our guest and therefore let our hospitable best in fitting gifts be given him twelve chief kings there are that order all the glorious things of this our kingdom and the thirteenth i exist as crown to all let instantly be thirteen garments given him and of gold precious and fine a talent while we hold this our assembly be all fetched and given that to our feast prepared as to his heaven our guest may enter and that nothing be left unperformed that fits his dignity euryalus shall here conciliate himself with words and gifts since past our rate he gave bad language this did all commend and give in charge and every king did send his herald for his gift euryalus answering for his part said alcinous our chief of all since you command i will to this our guest by all means reconcile and give him this entirely metalled sword the handle massy silver and the board that gives it cover all of ivory new and in all kinds worth his quality this put he straight into his hand and said frolic o guest and father if words fled have been offensive let swift whirlwinds take and ravish them from thought may all gods make thy wife's sight good to thee in quick retreat to all thy friends and best loved breeding seat their long miss quitting with the greater joy in whose sweet vanish all thy worst annoy and frolic thou to all height friend said he 
which heaven confirm with wished felicity nor ever give again desire to thee of this sword's use which with effect so free in my reclaim thou hast bestowed on me this said athwart his shoulders he put on the right fair sword and then did set the sun when all the gifts were brought which back again with king alcinous in all the train were by the honoured heralds borne to court which his fair sons took and from the resort laid by their reverend mother each his throne of all the peers which yet were overshone in king alcinous's command ascended whom he to pass as much in gifts contented and to his queen said wife see brought me here the fairest cabinet i have and there impose a well cleansed in and utter weed a cauldron heat with water that with speed our guests well bathe and all his gifts be made sure it may a joyful appetite procure to his succeeding feast and make him hear the poet's hymn with the securer ear to all which i will add my bowl of gold in all framed curious to make him hold my memory always dear and sacrifice with it at home to all the deities then arete her maids charged to set on a well-sized cauldron quickly which was done clear water poured in flame made so entire it gilt the brass and made the water fire in mean space from her chamber brought the queen a wealthy cabinet where pure and clean she put the garments and the gold bestowed by that free state and then the other vowed by her alcinous and said now guest make close and fast your gifts lest when you rest a shipboard sweetly in your way you meet some loss that less may make your next sleep sweet this when ulysses heard all sure he made and closed and bound safe for the saving trade the reverend for her wisdom circe had in four years taught him then the handmaid bade his worth to bathing which rejoiced his heart for since he did with his calypso part he had no hot baths none had favoured him nor being so tender of his kingly limb but all the time he spent in her abode he lived respected as he were a god cleansed then and balmed fair shirt and robe put on fresh come from bath and to the feasters gone nausicaa that from the god's hands took the sovereign beauty of her blessed look stood by a well-carved column of the room and through her eye her heart was overcome with admiration of the port impressed in his aspect and said god save you guest be cheerful as in all the future state your home will show you in your better fate but yet even then let this remember to be your life's price i lent and you owe it me and varied in all counsels gave reply nausicaa flower of all this empery so juno's husband that the strife for noise makes in the clouds bless me with strife of joys in the desired day that my house shall show as i as i to a goddess there shall vow to thy fair hand that did my being give which i'll acknowledge every hour i live this said alcinous placed him by his side then took they feast and did in parts divide the several dishes filled out wine and then the strive for his worth of worthy men and reverenced of state demodocus was brought in by the good pontinus in midst of all the guests they gave him place against a lofty pillar when this grace the graced with wisdom did him from the chine that stood before him of a white-toothed swine being far the daintiest joint mixed through with fat he carved to him and sent it where he sat by his old friend the herald willing thus herald reach this to grave demodocus say i salute him and his worth embrace poets deserve past all the human race reverend respect and honour since the queen of knowledge and the supreme worth in men the muse informs them and loves all their race this reached the herald to him who the grace received encouraged which when feast was spent ulysses amplified to this assent demodocus i must prefer you far past all your sort if or the muse of war jove's daughter prompts you that the greeks respects or if the sun that those of troy affects for i have heard you since my coming sing the fate of greece to an admired string how much our sufferance was how much we wrought 
how much the actions rose to when we fought so lively forming as you have been there or some free relator lent your ear forth then and sing the wooden horse's frame built by epius by the martial dame taught the whole fabric which by force of slight ulysses brought into the city's height when he had stuffed it with as many men as levelled lofty ilion with the plain with all which if you can as well enchant as with expression quick and elegant you sung the rest i will pronounce you clear inspired by god past all that ever were this said even stirred by god up he began and to his song fell past the forms of man beginning where the greeks a shipboard went and every chief had set on fire his tent when the other kings in great ulysses guide in troy's vast market-place the horse did hide from whence the trojans up to ilion drew the dreadful engine where sat all aru their kings about it many counsels given how to dispose it in three ways were driven their whole distractions first if they should feel the hollow wood's heart searching with piercing steel or from the battlements drawn higher yet deject it headlong or that counterfeit so vast and novel set on sacred fire vowed to appease each angered godhead's ire on which opinion they thereafter saw they then should have resolved the unaltered law of fate presaging that troy then should end when the hostile horse she should receive to friend for therein should the grecian kings lie hid to bring the fate and death they after did he sung besides the greeks eruption from those their hollow crafts and horse foregone and how they made the population tread beneath her feet so high a city's head in which affair he sung in other place that of that ambush some man else did race the ilian towers than laertiades but here he sung that he alone did seize with menelaus the ascended roof of prince deiphobus and mars-like proof made of his valour a most dreadful fight daring against him and there vanquished quite in little time by great minerva's aid all ilion's remnant and troy level laid this the divine expressor did so give both act and passion that he made it live and to ulysses facts did breathe a fire so deadly quickening that it did inspire old death with life and rendered life so sweet and passionate that all there felt it fleet which made him pity his own cruelty and put into that ruth so pure an eye of human frailty that to see a man could so revive from death yet no way can defend from death his own quick powers it made feel their death's horrors and he felt life fade in tears his feeling brain sweat for in things that move past utterance tears ope all their springs nor are there in the powers that all life bears more true interpreters of all than tears and as a lady mourns her soul-loved lord that fallen before his city by the sword fighting to rescue from a cruel fate his town and children and in dead estate yet panting see him wraps him in her arms weeps shrieks and pours her health into his arms lies on him striving to become his shield from foes that still assail him spears impelled through back and shoulders by whose points embrued they raise and lead him into servitude labour and languor for all which the dame eats down her cheeks with tears and feeds life's flame with miserable sufferance so this king of tears sweat anguish oped a boundless spring nor yet was seen to any one man there but king alcinous who sat so near he could not scape him sighs so choked so break from all his tempers which the king did take both note and grave respect of and thus spake hear me phaeacian counsellors and peers and seize demodocus perhaps all ears are not delighted with his song for ever since the divine muse sung our guest hath never contained from secret mornings it may fall that something sung he hath been grieved withal as touching his particular forbear that feast may jointly comfort all hearts here and we may cheer our guest up tis our best in all due honour for our reverend guest is all our celebration gifts and all his love hath added to our festival a guest and suppliant too we should esteem dear as our brother one that doth but dream he hath a soul 
or touch but at a mind deathless and manly should stand so inclined nor cloak you longer with your curious wit loved guest whatever we shall ask of it it now stands on your honest state to tell and therefore give your name no more conceal what of your parents and the town that bears name of your native or of foreigners that nearest border you are called in fame there's no man living walks without a name noble or base but had one from his birth imposed as fit as to be born what earth people and city own you give to know tell but our ships all that your way must know for our ships know the expressed minds of men and will so most intentively retain their scopes appointed that they never err and yet use never any man to steer nor any rudders have as others need they know men's thoughts and whither tends their speed and there will set them for you cannot name a city to them nor fat soil that fame hath any notice given but well they know and they will fly to them though they ebb and flow in blackest clouds and night and never bear of any rack or rock the slenderest fear but this i heard my sire nausithous say long since that neptune seeing us convey so safely passengers of all degrees was angry with us and upon our seas a well-built ship we had near harbour come from safe deduction of some stranger home made in his flitting billows stick stone still and dimmed our city like a mighty hill with shade cast round about it this report the old king made in which miraculous sort if god had done such things or left undone at his good pleasure be it but now on and truth relate us both whence you erred and to what clime of men would be transferred with all their fair towns be they as they are if rude unjust and all irregular or hospitable bearing minds that please the mighty deity which one of these would you be set at say and you are there and therefore what afflicts you why to hear the fate of greece and ilion mourn you so the gods have done it as to all they do destined destruction that from thence may rise a poem to instruct posterities fell any kinsman before ilion some worthy sire-in-law or like near son whom next our blood and self-race we love or any friend perhaps in whom did move a knowing soul and no unpleasing thing since such a good one is no underling to any brother for what fits true friends true wisdom is that blood and birth transcends end of the eighth book